Hello there everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which we will be dealing with uh, evaporation using the uh, VOF or volume of fluid model in ANSYS Fluent. I have made a sketch here of a tube enclosed with a solid uh, cylinder or a shell and that cylinder we will put on uh, a constant uh, temperature which is uh, higher than the uh, saturated temperature of the fluid we will going to introduce in order to let it go out uh, evaporated. So uh, let's start by uh, now we go to mesh and in mesh here I just made the uh, naming selections for the inlet you can see it here outlet and uh, I just called this the shell which is a solid and the PCM is the phase change uh, material which is the liquid inside the tube and the tube is the solid here so uh, PCM fluid which is the phase changing and uh, the shell solid and the tube solid and we have the inlet and outlet and the mesh is of uh, I didn't do anything here uh, uh, significant in the mesh because it's not a meshing tutorial it's just uh, to show you how to uh, do the phase change and here uh, this is 0.6 meters and uh, uh, there is the contacts I will just change uh, the names in order to see them in the uh, mesh uh, well so uh, contact region first is between the shell and the PCM so I will rename it and I will call it shell PCM okay uh, the second one is shell and tube so rename shell tube and the last one is uh, PCM tube so rename PCM tube and now we go to fluent but before going to fluent make sure you go to mesh and you click on update I have did this and now uh, we will wait for the uh, sketch to be imported so now we will deal with uh, a pressure base because it's not a high velocity uh, uh, example and we will deal with uh, transient uh, because uh, the uh, properties are changing with time and uh, we will enter the uh, gravity which is minus 9.81 in the y direction now uh, let's go to setting up physics or we you can double click on models and see the options here we will click on energy equation because we are dealing with the heat transfer and the change in temperature and now let's go to the uh, multi-phase uh, or you can go from here to the multi-phase and we choose volume of fluid now let me stop here a little bit to explain to you the following options the first thing we have here is the number of uh, phases which are the Eulerian phases and it's by default set 2 but now I will change it to 3 because uh, we have 3 phases the primary phase which is uh, the air and the secondary phases which are the steam and water so there are 3 phases air, water and the uh, steam or vapor so uh, the software allows you to use up to 20 phases which I uh, almost think you will not use so uh, let's go to the, down to the other option which is the coupled level set plus VOF now this option actually is an option for two-phase flow where no mass transfer is involved so it's uh, uh, not uh, our case because we have mass uh, transfer in this example and uh, this option allows you to apply an interface tracking method according to the uh, manual to the uh, fluent manual uh, and this uh, method couples the level set method with the VOF formulation. The VOF formulation is the, is the formulation you see here and which we will be talking about in a while. So it's the explicit or the implicit formulation and the level set method is actually based on a continuous function phi which I can show you here. It's uh, the phi it describes the interface between the two media and uh, it's actually uh, plus D plus absolute D and minus absolute D if uh, primary phase or secondary phase uh, you can see it here and D is the distance from uh, it's the distance uh, to the interface so uh, I'll not get more deep into this and let's uh, get down to the 
uh, formulations, uh, explicit and implicit. Now, the explicit scheme, uh, which is one of the VOF formulation, it allows you to calculate flow based on uh, an appropriate step obtained from uh, from previous steps. So uh, it's uh, easy to uh, uh, it's easy to uh, implement and it's accurate. So uh, it's uh, almost used, but it is used for. Uh, small time steps where it is uh, limited by a current number. What is a current number? A current number is a measure of how much information it traverses a computational uh, grid cell uh, delta x in a given time step delta t. So now uh, when you uh, set the current number you actually set how much information you want to collect from the uh, a grid the cell from the uh, computational grid cell the flow is crossing in a certain uh, time step so uh, like the more uh, the lower the value is the uh, more information you will collect so it, uh, make sure it's not above uh, uh, it's not greater than one because uh, it will be uh, crossing more than uh, one grid uh, one grid in a single time step therefore it will not be able to collect information about the flow in this single uh, cell that it passed. Now, if some of you want more information about the explicit and implicit schemes uh, like they are uh, written here, explicit method, it's uh, non-iterative, time-dependent, and better numerical accuracy compared to implicit formulation. But, as we said, it's limited to a current number. And if you see CFL, it's also a current number, uh, so that you don't uh, get confused. And the implicit method is iterative, and it's used with any solver, steady or transient, and it's more powerful in steady-state applications. And the implicit uh, method actually depends on the uh, current uh, or the present uh, uh, the present states in order to uh, calculate the. Uh, solution uh, you want so it's actually uh, it calculates a, a matrix which uh, makes it a bit more uh, harder than the uh, explicit method because uh, the explicit method just uses the uh, previous solution in order to uh, calculate uh, the present one so uh, let's not get uh, too theoretical now and let's uh, continue to see uh, what uh, we have in our case we will use the implicit and because and that's because we are using a large time step and we are not sticking to small time steps uh, which are uh, limited to a range between 0.001 to 0.1 seconds and this is for the explicit formulation now what's the volume fraction cutoff the volume fraction cutoff it is some uh, value that you provide uh, here and uh, it is used as a lower cutoff for volume fraction. Therefore, all uh, volume uh, fraction values which are uh, below uh, in your domain, which are below this number, are set to zero and the upper cutoff is calculated as uh, one minus uh, this uh, uh, value so that all uh, volume uh, fraction values above the upper cutoff value are set to one. And this is the default one, E minus 6, I will not uh, change it. And uh, we go to the body force formulations. However, if you like to know more about the current number, the formula about it, I can show you here in, the, uh, in my lecture. It's uh, C equal uh, U delta T over delta X, uh, delta X being the uh, spacing of the grid in the numerical model, delta T is the... Uh, characteristic wave speed that is the time step and the characteristic time speed is the u so uh, let's continue by going to the uh, body uh, force formulation uh, implicit body forces are used to uh, they are designed for flows with large body forces and they are used to improve solution conversions uh, by accounting for the partial equilibrium of the pressure gradient and the body forces which are inside the uh, momentum equation of the governing equations and uh, why does fluent provides this it's because uh, uh, this treatment uh, allows to make the solution more robust so uh, let's choose it in order for the solution to be more uh, uh, 
capable of converging and now let's go to the VOF submodels and uh, actually uh, we will not use any of these and the reason why is uh, because the uh, open flow, open channel flow is uh, as it na as its name says. It's for rivers and dams, and which is not our case, of course. And the open open channel wave boundary condition, it is uh, it actually allows you to simulate the propagation of waves, and this is useful for marine industry, which is also not our case. So did we forget anything here? Let's go to the interface modeling and I will uh, explain for you here. We will uh, use the sharp type and the sharp type is used when uh, a distinct interface is present between faces. Now we will assume that we have a sharp interface occurring between the uh, liquid and the uh, vapor because uh, also we are not able to use dispersed dispersed as the previous experiences the show it is uh, not recommended for uh, the use with uh, evaporation and uh, it is actually uh, what is a dispersed flow it's uh, a flow consisting of finite particles which are for example drops or bubbles which uh, form the discrete phase and uh, the discrete phase, this discrete phase is distributed in a connected volume of a continuous phase. So for example, some uh, uh, solid uh, particles inside a uh, medium of air, for example, uh, and uh, they are actually used when phases are, uh, uh, sorry, uh, they are used when phases are interpenetrating. And interpenetrating is actually uh, you can say it's mixtures and here we don't have mixture so it's uh, almost uh, the another reason not to use it now the sharp dispersed uh, phase is uh, a hybrid approach for flows consisting of both the sharp phase and uh, dispersed phase uh, sorry of both interfaces sharp and dispersed and uh, now uh, okay I think this is enough so let's uh, proceed so now let's move on and go to the viscous model and I will assume that we have a low uh, viscosity and therefore we will account for a high Reynolds number and thus we will uh, we will choose one of the turbulence models and I will choose the uh, K epsilon which is a prominent model and it's used for a general uh, purpose CFD applications and it's also widely industrially uh, used and it accounts for the K and epsilon the K which is the uh, turbulent kinetic energy and uh, epsilon is the dissipation kinetic energy and if you want to go more into theory you can read about it in the manual and uh, here I want to use the realizable model and the reason for uh, choosing realizable is uh, because uh, it satisfies certain mathematical constraints on the Reynolds stresses and this uh, it is actually uh, powerful for, for flows where boundary layers may be under strong pressure gradients or where for example uh, rotation might occur so I am accounting for uh, such probabilities so I will choose realizable and enhanced wall treatment and the near wall treatment and uh, actually I use this because it uh, combines uh, uh, to uh, the uh, two-layer model with enhanced wall functions. Now, uh, to explain this for people who are not involved in fluid mechanics, uh, the uh, two-layer model actually it formulates the law of the wall. The law of the wall is uh, uh, assuming that the uh, properties near the wall, so that in this case near the tube, is uh, global for the whole uh, system and the uh, enhanced wall functions uh, allows the uh, fully turbulent uh, flow to be easily modified and it extends uh, uh, in order to take into account other effects such as the pressure gradient and uh, variable uh, properties so uh, no uh, more uh, options to use here let's click ok and proceed and now let's go to materials and let's uh, insert the materials before we go to uh, name them in the uh, multi-phase uh, in the multi-phase uh, model so fluent database and go down to uh, water vapor copy and then unclick and click on water liquid and click copy then close 
So now let's go back to the uh, multi-phase and let's double click on faces and name our faces in order to see them uh, uh, as their names in the uh, boundary conditions instead of seeing phase 1, phase 2, phase 3. It is, it is more uh, clear. So now we will uh, choose water, liquid and just call it water and we will choose the last one which is the water vapor you can call it vapor or steam I will call it steam and here we go to interactions and in interactions we should uh, increase the number of phase transfer mechanisms we only have one which is from water to steam and the mechanism is evaporation condensation and here I want to tell you that the uh, evaporation frequency and the condensation frequency are related to a coefficient called uh, CoF and it's uh, if you see the manual it's uh, here it includes the uh, vapor phase with the uh, liquid density vapor uh, density and the saturated temperature and this is in the Lee model uh, which is uh, here you can see the vapor transport equation for people who want to get more into theory and uh, this is what the uh, software is solving now I will uh, keep them as default and to know them more uh, they actually denote the probability of vapor molecules which escape from uh, uh, which escape from and uh, ab absorb in the interface. Now by default these are set to 0.1. However, you should note that uh, uh, if you have bubbles, for example, the bubble diameter, which of course you don't have here in evaporation, or the accommodation coefficient which I showed you, are usually not very known and uh, uh, therefore the appropriate values for a given problem can be different. In this case, uh, it is important that these values uh, should be fine-tuned in order to match uh, your experiment if you are doing uh, an experiment in your uh, lab or at university. So I will keep them as default and, and the proceed. Now I will go to surface tension. And surface tension, I should turn it on here. It actually deals with... Uh, now all of you in physics know that the molecule at the interface is exposed uh, uh, at the surface it's ex exposed to a different environment than inside the material itself so uh, let's say you have a cup of water and the surface up uh, it has uh, uh, different binding energy than uh, the deep inside the water so uh, here you should account for uh, this uh, surface tension and uh, the surface tension you can uh, know more about it uh, it actually relates to temperature and uh, you can read more about it in uh, certain published papers however i will uh, just choose a constant here and i will uh, since it's uh, we are dealing with high temperatures i will use a point uh, 0.6 for uh, the three and uh, I will tell you uh, where you can find the surface temperature values uh, this is a PDF from uh, the uh, International Association of the four properties of water and steam and it's uh, it contains a table which shows you the temperature and the surface uh, tension experimental in front of it so uh, you can go and since we are dealing with evaporation it's uh, for high temperatures I will choose something between uh, uh, 58 and uh, 37 and uh, this is in meter Newton per me uh, sorry milli Newton per meter so I will choose it you should divide it by thousand so I will choose uh, 0.6 as I did or you can choose 0.53 uh, for example just take an average one and uh, continue with it let's take it 0.5 which is uh, a bit more into realistic and let's click OK now uh, let's close here and let's proceed make sure the uh, cell zone conditions the this is fluid the PCM the shell is solid the tube is solid and let's go to the boundary conditions and arrange them as zone type now the inlet I will choose the velocity inlet which is uh, totally water 
and it will be uh, I will use a UDF uh, file here to make sure that the whole uh, water entered will be evaporated so uh, I will go to velocity 1.c it's a C file I will show you the file now if you want to uh, write it the file is uh, here it's a piece of code and uh, uh, if you want to know how to write this code you can review my video about uh, UDF the introduction to UDF coding and it actually a summary of it is that uh, when uh, the uh, time is even you will uh, have a velocity of one meter per second however uh, if it's odd you will have something approximately uh, near zero and why I do this is because I want uh, to uh, give it a step uh, like to give it uh, uh, one push for the water in order to have time to evaporate totally so uh, this is it and uh, now you will find something like uh, this when you interpret the code therefore no errors and no warnings and let's go back I will show you here how to introduce it in your boundary conditions you go you double click on inlet when the phase is mixture and you go you will see it here the UDF mass flow it's actually mass flow but uh, you can, I will use it as velocity it's uh, of no great deal and the temperature I will use uh, Celsius because I'm used to it so uh, temperature in Celsius and uh, I will make it enter at 90 and the saturated temperature is you saw it in the Lee model it's 100 degrees Celsius so uh, and here I will the other thing is the outlet which is the pressure outlet I will not uh, do anything with it and the wall shell I will double click and it's uh, a solid and I will uh, put the solid to be at a temperature of let's say you can put it as you like I'll put it 200 degrees okay and uh, what you should make sure here is now this is the phase is mixture and when you choose mixture when you want to edit the temperature and the velocity however you should go to uh, water and click edit because the total inlet is the total uh, phase inlet is water so the volume fraction should be one and you should press ok you can also make sure that the steam is zero if you want however it will be zero it will be set as zero ok and now what we have to do is in the mesh I will create them from scratch because uh, I need to couple them correctly so that heat transfer will take place because if you didn't uh, put couple for the interfaces no heat transfer will take place so I will delete and now I will uh, create them from scratch so I go to manual create and I will go here let me see I don't care about all this mess but I want to see the last uh, uh, terms so here it's uh, source shell and the target is tube so it's between the shell and the tube so I write shell tube and I click on coupled wall and I create the next thing is the source tube and the target is the fluid since the fluid is inside the tube and I put coupled wall and therefore tube PCM or tube fluid as you like and create now I close and proceed to go this is enough here and let's go to the methods now according to the manual the solution method uh, should be of uh, should be one of the diffusive uh, interface capturing discretization schemes for volume fractions therefore it's uh, either uh, either quick or uh, HRIC as you can see here the modified HRIC for the volume fraction I will choose it and uh, uh, however for the rest I will not choose quick as the manual says but I will choose the third order MUSCL and uh, this is uh, because of its potential to improve spatial accuracy for all mesh types and therefore I have a uh, uh, random mesh so it's, uh, it's much pro uh, much proper to use it and uh, it can uh, reduce the number of uh, 
the number of diffusion most significantly for complex 3D flows. So uh, let me use it here also for the turbulence and the energy and I think this is enough and I will use the PISO and this is because the uh, PISO scheme is required for all transient uh, calculations in general so I will use it and I will keep the Presto scheme because, uh, for pressure because it is also uh, from the manual however the transient formulation I will use a high order because uh, this will be required because of the uh, uh, heavy calculations that we will encounter and now let's go to uh, no need to do anything in controls now let's go to initialization or you can go from the solving here I'll choose hybrid initialization and I will initialize I hope we didn't forget anything here Actually, we forget one little thing, we should do it, it's the operating conditions, you can find it in the cell zone conditions or in the boundary conditions and you should uh, click on the specified operating density and the operating density should be uh, uh, assigned to the lightest phase which is in this case air and it is assigned for the density of air in uh, the uh, uh, by default. So click OK and let's go back to initialize and we should after initialization we should patch and the patch is uh, necessary to insert initial uh, uh, conditions so uh, we should uh, uh, we should assign that air is in the whole domain we cannot uh, the reason why i use air is because we cannot only use water and liquid there should be something filled here before uh, uh, evaporation takes place or before the liquid enters because uh, no cell gradients can have uh, 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 empty uh, volume or uh, uh, they cannot be uh, in the state of a void so here let's go to steam and assign it as a zero and then water and assign it as zero initial conditions and let's close now let's go to autosave and increase one to save okay save every time step and let's create a solution animation to see how our uh, work will go I will create a contour of uh, phases and the phases will be I don't need the interface the inlet the outlet it's okay I don't need these also I want to see the interior PCM therefore the fluid and the internal the fluid how it's changing so I click on save and I go to let me use the uh, water I should I want to track how the water is uh, uh, going so I click save and let me also create another contour for steam and the challenge here is not to have uh, water liquid on the outlet this is currently still under research however we will try our best not to have water at the outlet and let's save for uh, I think we need steam this time okay save so close this is for let's uh, make sure this is for water okay so this is it okay now let's go and let's set the uh, number of time steps to be I will set it 50 and let's check case okay it's recommended that we check our mesh we go back to set uh, setting up domains and we go we click on check everything is okay now uh, animation sequence okay uh, let's uh, ignore this and let's calculate so guys just one uh, uh, thing I change here is the velocity of the inlet which I uh, change it to 0.01 uh, for the uh, 
even time and uh, for the odd time it's uh, almost zero and I change it because it's uh, uh, to give uh, the water more time in order to evaporate so uh, let's see here the results it's almost uh, hundred percent it's almost one uh, so it's near one I want to say let's say it's 99 percent now uh, vapor but uh, let us uh, see the process how uh, things went so let's see in the and I want to tell you that I stopped at the time step uh, 36 more that's actually let's say 45 seconds or 44 seconds so uh, let's go to the results and uh, let's view uh, our uh, results as a contours and as a movie so I will insert a volume for both one for liquid and uh, one for the uh, steam and I will show you how the phase change is taking place so actually we can know here how much time steps there are so uh, let's wait for the sketch to get uh, okay here we go and let's go to volume rendering and the first one is the uh, water volume fraction and let's make a resolution 40 in order to see it more dense so let's apply and now let's go after it to another volume rendering which will just be for steam volume fraction okay let's go to volume rendering 2 and it's steam steam volume fraction it's here let's make it the same resolution 40 and let's change its uh, color in order to uh, see the difference between them so here I want to make it instead of rainbow I'll make it a gray style for the steam and let's take a look now okay now uh, this will show us more let's go to the animation and uh, make a video for this in order to see it well so let's go back to the zero save movie So guys, this is the uh, this is the video, and you can see it's how the face change, and this is uh, the white, which is the uh, approximately uh, hundred percent uh, steam, and the temperature. I also recorded it in two uh, D. This is the temperature distribution, and it actually reaches a somehow steady state after a while. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed, sorry for uh, the long time but uh, I wanted to make sure that every step is understood and if you have any questions please uh, drop it uh, in the comment or uh, you can text me and I'm more than happy to answer you. Thank you very much and goodbye.